Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to another edition of the Rotopros.com Best DFS Show that just happens to come out here around 8 Eastern Standard Time. My name is Rob Diamond, Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter, Sir Robert Six on all the main sites. This is another EPL breakdown for Match Week 34, Saturday, April. 13th, 2019. Really interesting slate. We don't see a lot of star power like we see from a lot of the normal slates where we have numerous different 10K players. And on top of that, uh, we can probably ignore them this week. I'll get into that a little bit more later. But uh, in terms of this slate, I think you're going to be able to get in whoever you want and be able to buy into whoever you want because a lot of those big name players may not even play this slate. Uh, so yeah, let's just jump right into this. As always, let's check out the schedule quickly. The first game on the slate, we have Bournemouth making a really quick trip. Uh, they're both down south teams uh, to Brighton to play Brighton Hove Albion. The second game on the slate, we have Cardiff making the trip way up north to play Burnley, all the way from Wales going up north to play Burnley. Uh, the third game on the slate, we have Everton making the trip from Liverpool into London to play Fulham, the next game on the slate, we have Wolves making the trip from Wolverhampton uh, down south to play Southampton. And the final game of the slate, we have West Ham making the trip from London up to Manchester to play Manchester United. So yeah, let's just jump right into this. First game on the slate, we have Bournemouth making the trip into Brighton. So yeah, this is actually a game where we have two teams that are in fairly poor form. Uh, Bournemouth are coming into this losing back-to-back -back games to Burnley and Leicester. They've won only one of their previous nine games and that one win did came come against Huddersfield excuse me they've lost six of their nine previous and uh, they've lost 10 of their 11 away games conceding twice in each of those losses and uh, they've also lost uh, 12 of their 16 away games this season they're, they're very simply just way way worse away from home uh, and they're already in bad form as it is uh, so there isn't really a lot to jump on board with in terms of Bournemouth so, yeah, let's quickly rip through them here. Um, I would probably stay away from Begovic. Uh, it's a mixture between Brighton not a, taking a lot of shots, so he's not going to have a lot of floor nor a lot of ceiling if he happens to hit, which is incredibly unlikely. And to further that, in the case that uh, he uh, concedes, it's just going to be an absolute disaster. He's just as likely to finish with a negative score this this. Uh, fantasy score of this slate than he is to actually completely take it down for you so not really interested in uh, Begovic or Borak whoever happens to get the start there uh, now at the back again there isn't really a whole lot to look at here I do like the fact that the Bournemouth wingbacks are so incredibly cheap in both uh, both excuse me uh, Adam Smith and uh, Nathaniel Klein uh, very cheap options there and uh, Nathan, Nathan Aki is another guy who has does have GPP upside, but like it should. Be, I think there's another guy down in that range who's actually viable this slate. So I'm not really that interested in uh, anyone on the Bournemouth defensive side of the ball at all. I think there's just better players and uh, better DFS options across the board. And even as we get across into the midfield, someone like Ryan Frazier, who is a borderline cash lock from slate to slate to get double digits, just isn't as appealing this slate from 8.3k. A lot of that has to do with the fact that Brighton are a team that tend to play extremely defensive and they force teams to either take really far away shots or uh, to try and play uh, tight little through balls, neither of which Bournemouth does very well. So I'm not really looking for Ryan Frazier to pay off this slate from 8.3k in cash and to further that in GPP, there just isn't the same upside as I would see in other slates. Uh, from something like a Ryan Frazier, Callum Wilson stack, which I've been chasing back-to-back -back slates uh, to absolutely no avail. So I'm not necessarily saying don't do it, but uh, yeah, it's just not where I'm interested. And uh, another big concern for me this slate too is that, well, uh, David Brooks took uh, a couple of the corners uh, Stanislas came on, uh, took on some minutes again. That's a big issue. So um, it all depends here how uh, Lerma is more of a, a foul yellow card issue and uh, is seeing reduced minutes usually for Stanislas. And what's been going on is that Bournemouth have a bunch of wingers, really, really talented wingers, whether it's David Brooks, Stanislas, I, Ryan Frazier, um, 
both Callum Wilson and Josh King can play at the exact same time. Solanke is actually owned by Liverpool, so it's not like he's just a random nobody. He does have future star uh, power when he's not so young anymore. Uh, so, yeah, the issue here is that what ends up happening is Bournemouth takes off guys like Lerma or Gosling, who are natural center midfielders, and both half decent players but they they do have their downsides uh and then what happens is they end up playing with all these wingers as center midfielders and it just doesn't work and that's why they've been losing so many games this uh recently and they, they're trying to fit a bunch of uh square pegs into round holes and it's just not going to work and like i mentioned calum wilson and josh king up front all you can really hope for maybe is a penalty shot maybe uh so Again, I'm just not too interested in Bournemouth. They're in horrible form and they're away from home. So there isn't really a lot to look at there. Now, to further that, Brighton is a team that is far, far, far better at home than away. Now, like I said earlier, they have lost back-to-back -back games. They're in pretty poor form uh, to Chelsea and Southampton. Uh, now, mind you, they've lost only three of their previous 10 and five of their uh, 15 home games this season. So, like I said, really good at home, not as big of a liability as, for example, Bournemouth away is. Uh, now, they've won only one of their previous five at home, despite their good home record, uh, and only three of their previous 10. Uh, losing three of their previous five, uh, that one win came against Huddersfield, and the losses were to Burnley, Southampton, and Liverpool. So, there's some names in there that they shouldn't be losing to, and there's a win there that isn't really that impressive and was kind of a gimme and would have been more more of an issue to talk about if they didn't win. Uh, now, that being said, like, like I was talking about, they don't allow crosses or counters. They allow long shots or tight little through balls, which could lead to a penalty shot, uh, which could give credence to Wilson or Josh King, whichever. It's kind of a toss-up who ends up taking it. I think it would probably be Wilson. Uh, but yeah, uh, a big thing for to remember about Brighton here is that they actually play on Tuesday against Cardiff. Uh, so we'll be talking about Cardiff here in the, the next game. But uh, yeah, that is something to remember here because we may see some surprise starters uh, and surprise rests. It's, it's tough to say at this point, but uh, it, minutes are a concern. Now, mind you, I think uh, Matt Ryan will continue to see minutes over David Button. And uh, I don't mind him this late for 5K at home. He isn't my favorite keeper play, uh, but he's definitely a top three keeper play for me and definitely in the top half of keeper plays uh so yeah i think uh, matt ryan makes this sense going up against Bournemouth. i'd probably keep it to gpp but he could get a, you could get uh, i wouldn't play him in cash i think there's better options both cheaper and more expensive but if you happen to land on this and you're completely set on a card don't feel bad about playing matt ryan let's put it that way uh so yeah uh to further that Going into the defense here, this is where I'm kind of looking to make a couple extra dollars this slate and try and save some money. So it'll be interesting to see who they line up as wingbacks. Now I'll just rip through this really quickly. Uh, Bernardo is acceptable, except his salary is atrocious. And there's about three guys that are around the 5K range this slate that should be around the 4K range, especially when we look at the 4K range and there's a bunch of guys that do the exact same thing they do. Uh, so I'm not necessarily interested in Bernardo. However, he does have a really solid floor around five day fantasy points. Montoya is someone that you probably shouldn't play in DFS. He's a decent enough player, uh, but he gets a lot of his points from defensive peripheral. So you'll notice he doesn't cross the ball very often against teams that aren't uh, necessarily uh, open play, which Southampton is. So yeah, uh, again, Montoya is like a tall uh, 6'3", kind of skinny uh, wing back who doesn't cross the ball very much more defensive now gate levong is someone that uh, again at, at uh, 4k you may want to start considering uh, i wouldn't read too deeply into the chelsea game uh, but if he does happen to get the start again this slate which i am hoping will happen uh i am looking for something to transpire around the five to eight 
fantasy point range, which is an excellent floor uh, from someone at 4K for this slate. Uh, so yeah, I, I definitely do like Bong if he happens to get the start. Don't be afraid to use Bong with Ryan if you are using Ryan and you're looking someone to pair with. Uh, if uh, it turns out that Bong isn't starting, I'm not necessarily as interested in Bruno. Uh, he is like a, a poor man's Montoya. So I'd rather even take Montoya over Bruno and I'd rather not take Montoya. So um, it's tough to say which wing back will get the start there, but, uh, in terms of the center backs now, I think it's, it's tough. What could happen here? Uh, again, Bournemouth, like I said, here's my thought process. Bournemouth take all their wingers and they put them into the midfields, even in the same midfields. What do wingers do? Wingers cross the ball a lot. What does Brighton not allow a lot of is successful crosses so what if Bournemouth who have been trying to fit a round uh, or a square peg into a round hole or however you want to say it repeatedly just try to cross the ball against a team that's filled with a bunch of six foot whatever guys at the back who don't allow a lot of crosses I think Shane Duffy not on DraftKings as much but on FanDuel I think the Brighton center backs could be really interesting for GPP I know their salaries are probably pretty high as per most center backs over there. But uh, in terms of uh, taking something with Matt Ryan, that's a little bit more viable on FanDuel. Do not sleep on the Brighton center backs. And there's a few center backs from teams that I feel that way about this slate. Brighton's definitely one of them uh, to counter the, the Nathan Aki, for example. I think taking the Brighton side makes, makes way more sense uh, because Bournemouth may just try and cross the ball a million times and uh, be unsuccessful, and the Brighton center backs will just chew. Um, so yeah, jumping into the midfield, it'll be interesting to see how they uh, line up with the, the minutes and the health. Um, I don't see Grobe playing 90 minutes. Uh, I don't see March playing 90 minutes. Uh, now, I do see them both playing, and in the case they both play, they'll be taking off Knockart, who will be taking the set pieces instead of Grobe, who will then relinquish set pieces to Grobe when he comes on the field. And Jahangelbash will be coming off for March. So, yeah, um, there's all your Brighton salaries just completely gutted. There's no reason to pay... 8k for someone who if Grobe is on the bench isn't playing 90 minutes uh now mind you he has played 90 minutes at home more than he has away so i will extend of all an olive branch there but if Grobe comes back knockers coming off the field they don't play at the same time uh so yeah I don't see a lot of reason to play the Brighton midfields. So you can cross out to 8K guys, like I was talking about the salaries earlier, and a 6K, 5K guy. Uh, and now up front, really, it's about Glenn Murray. Him and Mitrovic fall into, I'll be talking about Mitrovic later, obviously, fall into this place where um, they've broken slates before and they don't cost very much at all. So are they? Hard to say. Are they in bad matchups? No. Uh, are they in uh, situations where they could still break a slate from a reasonable salary? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so I don't see Glenn Murray going off without two goals. He could get a penalty shot goal this slate or something like that. But uh, yeah, he, he is in contention for me for 5.6K, but that that's where I, I would end it there. It's not... It's not something I'm building around by any means. So, yeah, uh, for this game, I think it makes sense to look at a one nothing Brighton win, a 2-1 maybe. Uh, that's a little steep. I don't see there being uh, three total goals, uh, but I also don't see Bournemouth winning this game. So, I'll say one nothing Brighton win, uh, Matt Ryan, top three keeper play this slate. Next game on the slate, we have Cardiff making the trip up north to Burnley. Uh, very interesting game here. Uh, the first step you can take here, obviously, is getting rid of Matt Ryan and putting in Tom Heaton. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, I'll, obviously, I'll talk about this a little bit. Uh, everyone knows my uh, love for Tom Heaton, so I'm pretty excited about this. Cardiff are one of the worst teams in the league. They come into this in... Well, it's tough to say they're in poor form. They've lost back-to-back -back games, but the two games are against City and Chelsea. Uh, it's pretty interesting, actually, if you're a schedule fanatic and you look at the schedules, the teams that are 
considered the worst and the worst uh, teams at the moment in reality, their schedules recently have been an absolute disaster. Uh, whether it's Fulham, Cardiff, uh, they've been playing uh, all of the teams, the league's best teams uh, in recent weeks. So it's not surprising that Cardiff come into this uh, back-to-back losses against City and Chelsea. They've lost five of their previous six and seven of their previous ten. Uh, They've lost 11 of their 15 away games this season, and they've won only two of those 15 away games. They've won only one of their previous five away games, which came against Southampton, and they've been shut out in three of their previous five away games and in five of their previous ten, scoring only once in four of those five losses. Uh, So, yeah, um... What to say about Cardiff? They allow a lot of shots, counters, and through balls, but not crosses, much like Brighton. Uh, They're just not as effective. Now, that being said, uh, like I was talking about in the previous game about those 3.2K guys, uh, you may want to pay attention to what Cardiff does at the back here. With Sol Bamba out for the rest of the season, it sounds like uh, Eskil Manga and uh, Morrison may get the, the rest of the looks for the, the rest of the season. And uh, Morrison is not immune to doing things, especially uh, from 3.1K against a susceptible team like Burnley. Now, as much as I like Tom Heaton, they are still Burnley. So I'm not going to sit here and tell everyone that Burnley are perfect and great, and Tom Heaton isn't even my favorite keeper play of the slate. Uh, but uh, in terms of uh, over Ryan, yes, uh, Tom Heaton is probably my second favorite keeper play of the slate. Uh, but that being said, Sean Morrison, like I said, is going to see 90 minutes, is not immune from doing things, and is probably too cheap. Um, he's fallen on to some set pieces before, too, which is really strange. Uh, but yeah, I, I wanted to talk about Joe Bennett very quickly. Uh, I definitely am considering him in this slate for cash for only 4K. Um the thing is, is that, like I said earlier, there's these 5K guys who I talked about already and we'll talk about more shortly who all kind of fluctuate between these 5 to 8 fantasy points, but for some reason they all cost 5K this slate. You can get guys like Joe Bennett who are going to do that exact same thing from 4K uh, for literally a 1K less and more in some cases. Exact same situation. Nobody really has an upside from all these 5K guys. So yeah, uh, that's uh, where I'm looking. If you want to use Joe Bennett, don't be afraid to use Joe Bennett this slate 4K uh, for a defender in cash. Now in the midfield, the thing about Burnley is that they just allow everyone to cross, shoot, do whatever. So so I think uh, Camarasa makes a lot of sense this slate from 7.8K. He should see some set pieces. Uh, he should get some open play opportunities. He should be low owned. Uh, but is he my favorite? No, uh, he's definitely up there though. Uh, definitely a top five cash play for me at 7.8K. Probably too cheap. It's just a matter of like if you want to use them. Uh, like I said... We'll be talking more about this later, but a lot of these big salaries you don't necessarily need this late. So uh, someone like uh, Camarasa falls through the cracks because you're already being able to afford everyone else when you pick certain guys. So there's two guys that I'm really kind of on the fence about this late for cash. Camarasa is one of them. Uh, I'll talk about the other here a little bit later. But yeah, uh, 7.8K, it definitely isn't the worst play of the slate. Now, like I said, Burnley allow everyone to do every things so theoretically you may not need Camarasa and you may just want to go with someone like Junior Hoylett or Mendez Lang uh, whoever gets to start out wide uh, Bobby Reed even could be interesting though I am concerned about his minutes they really haven't been there for quite some time uh, now with Patterson out Niasse could start to see more 90-minute games, which makes him very interesting to me. And he's been seeing a lot of good minutes lately. I do like Niasse, the slate in GPP from 5.1K. Put him in your uh, exposure somewhere. Uh, I definitely wouldn't go over, like, uh, maybe 1 in 10. Uh, Make sure you got Niasse in there somewhere. I would even suggest putting him in a big 
uh, GPP because his ownership will be definitely below 5%, well below. I'll be surprised if it's over 2% in the big GPP. So, yeah, uh, don't sleep on Nyase, uh 5.1 uh, this late on DK. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's really my card of situation. Let's jump over to Burnley. So, Burnley's actually coming into this in half-decent form. Uh, they've won back-to-back -back games against Wolves and Bournemouth. They've scored five goals over those two games, and they've allowed only one. Let's go Tom Heaton. This season, though, this is the really interesting thing about Burnley. They're sitting just above the relegation zone right now. They're a half-decent team. But for the rest of the season, they still have to play in their four previous games. After this, this is, uh, I think there's still five after this. Four. Four. Uh, and they're four. So following this game, excuse me, they play Arsenal, Chelsea, and Manchester City. Uh, so they need to win this game. They need to win this game, which kind of draws me to my next point. This time of the season is really fun because teams need to win. Uh, and some teams don't need to win. So teams like Burnley, if they don't win this game, they may end up just relegated uh, without uh, without uh, out of their hand. So I, I don't really see them sitting back and uh, letting this game to come to them. They've lost only four of the previous 14 games. They've won four of the previous seven and five of the previous 10 home games, losing only two of those previous seven or five of those previous home games as well. Uh like I said, they, they just allow everything. Um, now, my big concern about Heaton and what makes him kind of, I don't want to say not my favorite, but falls down the slate a little bit for me, is that he hasn't been seeing as many saves as he has in not only previous games, but previous seasons. And while that may lead to success in terms of wins and clean sheets, it doesn't lead to the ceilings that we've usually hoped for. So, um... I'm a little bit less on Heaton than I would like to be. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think uh, all three, not in the same card. You cannot play Camarasa and Heaton in the same card because you need Camarasa from 7.8K to either have, like, if you're playing Heaton, to have, like, the game of the slate without scoring a goal or getting an assist. So, yeah, um, no reason to play both of them at the same time. Uh, lots of options this slate. So either take the camera ass aside because Burnley allow all sorts of floor. Or even better yet, uh, go Cardiff Cash Burnley GPP. Uh, the Cardiff Crossing floor and cash. And then take someone like Tom Heaton in GPP. Now, my big issue with uh, Burnley in terms of, like I said, their salaries... Like I was talking about, there's these guys that finish five to eight fantasy points, but now he costs five k, and he doesn't really have that much of an upside. Uh, so yeah, uh, against Cardiff, they they don't allow crosses, so I don't see uh, Charlie Taylor necessarily paying off. Now, if Lowton gets to start over Bardsley, I do have interest in in him, and if I was to go any route, I would avoid Taylor and Cash and just go Lowton and Heaton and GPP. Now, I do have concerns that Lowton is coming back from a long-term injury, and he wasn't necessarily fully fit last game. However, he does play in the same side as one of my favorite plays this slate, uh, which I'll talk about here in a second. But if, theoretically, again, if Burnley allow everything, crosses, shots, um, but not much is getting through, that means a lot of this is getting blocked and uh, cleared. So, yeah, uh, Ben Me, Don't sleep in Ben Me this slate, especially over on FanDuel. I think he makes a lot of sense, especially for GPP, especially for pairing with Tom Heaton in GPP. Uh, that's one of my favorite FanDuel stacks this slate. Now, moving over into the midfield, one of the things I really like about Burnley is that they have a lot of uh, the midfield forward option guys and that happen to do really well. So I think Dwight McNeil makes a lot of sense this slate from 8.6K. He's seen close enough to 90 minutes, but he's just playing really, really, really well. Uh, in top-notch top form, maybe one, one of the most top four in foreign players in the league at the moment. So don't sleep on Dwight McNeil, uh, the slate 8.6K, playing incredible, worth every penny. Uh, now to further that, uh, Ashley Westwood has been playing incredible as well. Um, it's frustrating. You don't have to guess what slates I've been chasing him and, uh, he hasn't really found the double digits for me. So yeah, um, I'm a little bit disappointed in that sense, but at the same time, 
Uh, don't sleep in Ashley Westwood, 7.3K. Even getting a McNeil-Westwood stack is going to be really low on this slate because of the pairing of the salary. So uh, you can do that in GPP. Uh, take these three I have up right now in cash, and McNeil, Lowton, and Heaton. Uh, take just McNeil and Heaton in cash or just McNeil in cash. I think works too. Uh, so yeah, and uh, up front is really interesting as well because... Burns and Chris Wood have been both, again, playing incredible level, uh, top-notch, uh, especially Ashley Burns. They don't necessarily transfer over to DFS very well, but in terms of real life, Burnley is firing at all cylinders at the moment. They have to win this game. I like GPP stacks of all Burnley 3-plus more because I think they're going to score three goals. My final score this game, Cardiff 0, Burnley 3, uh, Dwight McNeil. Uh, make sure to get him into your cash and however you like into midfield or forward probably forward next game on the slate we have Everton making the trip into the heart of London to play Fulham really excited about this game um Everton are coming into this in incredible form. They've won three straight against Arsenal, West Ham, and Chelsea. Now, you may not notice, but all three of those teams are London teams. And uh, while they may have only traveled two for the West Ham game, it's never easy to beat a London team. Uh, Everton have, uh, like I said, uh, they've won three of their previous five, uh, winning the three straight. Uh, they've alternated a win and a loss for three straight away. Uh, so it's interesting to see what happens they're due for a loss, if you believe in that kind of thing. I think it's going to break this slate. I think it will continue. But I'll talk about that again shortly here. And uh, now, the big issue for Everton is... Um, or I shouldn't say the big issue. The big thing for Everton, the issue for them at the start of the season was how often or how consistently they conceded. And that has completely changed. Pickford is on the top of his game at the moment. Um, if you're not playing David De Gea, you want to play Jordan Pickford this slate. I'll say that much. So yeah, um, Jordan Pickford, 5.5 K it's, it's tough. I have some, uh, I don't want to say, uh, a predisposition of these kind of slates that Fulham may just crush my soul. Uh, so I'm not like jumping over joy to get Pickford in, but I'm very conscious of the fact he's probably the top keeper play this slate. Uh, just like I said, top form, making saves, getting clean sheets, getting wins, double digits bound, 5.5K. Hard to go wrong considering how bad Fulham really are. Uh, so yeah, Everton have allowed only two goals in the previous five away wins. So in each of those wins, uh, they've allowed... Uh, only two goals in over those five games. And now the, the big kicker is that, like I said, they've lost eight uh, half of their games, eight of their 16 away games this season, and they're just much better at home than they are away. So a couple boxes unchecked. Now, if you have been following my videos for a bit and you remember my Champions League from this midweek, I talked about what happens when you have a team that starts with all the boxes checked and as you go, you have to start on checking the boxes. And that's bad. That's really bad because what that does is that sets you up for a big loss in DFS. Uh, because with a team that comes in with all the boxes checked, they're expected to do really well. They're going to have high ownerships. And they usually carry high salaries with that. Everton has all the boxes checked already this slate. City had all the boxes checked going into Spurs this midweek in Champions League. And like I broke down through the video, as we went, we just kept unchecking boxes. Uh, so, yeah, Everton are bad away from home. Um, they've been consistently shambly all season at conceding. Um, they've... They're due for a loss in their away uh, win alternation that they've got going. I don't know. Like, uh, there's just boxes being unchecked. It makes me uncomfortable. I'll say that much. Now, yeah, one of the reasons Pickford is so awesome is because Digne and Coleman are just incredible plays at 5.7 and 6.4. You can't go wrong. Either or, cash or GPP, take all three in GPP. I think it's going to still be a little bit complicated for people to fit all of uh, the Everton backline and chase the GPP without 
taking a huge punt somewhere. Uh, so yeah, uh, I think that makes sense in GPP um, and uh, making uh, some alterations. But yeah, uh, Pickford and one of the wingbacks in cash, all three in GPP, or uh, one of the just fill in as a, a whatever with one of the wingbacks. They're all excellent plays. Ding Yang, Coleman, don't sleep in them this slate. I'd probably just stick to uh, Lucas Digne because he leads the league and crosses. Uh, so, and he's going up against the the arguably the league's worst team when you consider uh, the the context around it. So, yeah. Uh, going into the midfield, you're going to want Siggy this slate. Uh, like I said, Fulmer just so bad. I don't necessarily see McNeil and Siggy at the same time, same card. I think it is a good core, but it just isn't necessarily where I want to spend my salary on both of them. I think they're one or the other uh, this late. And I'd rather spend up. Uh, and that, again, makes me a little bit uncomfortable uh, because they are away and Burnley is at home. But Siggy, 9.4K, probably the top play of this slate because Fulham are so bad. And you could just fill him around with that. Uh, Rich Allison has been playing really well, 8.4K. Uh, but outside of that, I'm not really interested. I think one of my favorite stacks is what you'll see right here. The Sigerson, Richarlison, Dengue, Coleman, Pickford, and then having to take some really huge punts outside of that and uh, see what else happens. Maybe chase uh, one more clean sheet option on Everton and uh, see if you can catch another uh, extra three fantasy points at the end. Uh, but in terms of uh, Fulham, they are officially relegated. They've lost nine straight and four straight at home. Those four straight, like I mentioned earlier about the schedule, those four straight home games losses were Liverpool, Chelsea, and both Manchester. So really tough go. You can't really blame them. However, they haven't scored more than once over those nine losses. And they haven't scored more than, or they, excuse me, they have scored more than once in only two of their 20 games this season. And in five of their, in, in only two of their previous 20 games. And in only five of their 33 total games this season. So in only five games this season, they've scored more than twice. Uh... Or scored more than once, excuse me, once. Jeez, that's even worse, once. Like, sometimes I write these things down and I don't even, like, cue into how significant that is. Uh, so, yeah, they've conceded twice in 13 straight and uh, more than three times in five of their previous 13 games. They are Adam Levitan, hashtag bad. This is a bad team, all around bad. So they're just GPP gems this slate, right? Isn't that how it works? I'm pretty sure that's how things work. Uh... That being said, no anywhere in the goaltenders, no. Uh, Calum Wilson isn't doing his, or Calum Wilson, Calum Chambers, the other Calum, isn't doing his cash viable thing anymore, so you can fade him, forget about that. And Joe Bryan falls into that 5K wide, 5 fantasy point range guy. Uh, he's got 9 in back-to-back -back games, I get that, but... Uh, it just isn't that kind of upside against Everton this slate. Uh, and to further that into the midfield, Shirley like, almost died. He had a really bad virus, was deathly sick, came back from it, is just getting back to like being able to walk and play again. Uh, now, one interesting case this slate, I'm going to break it down real quick, and why I, it, this slate has me a little bit concerned. And it's Ryan Sessegnon. So if you're unfamiliar who who Ryan Sessegnon is, he is the future English star. Um, he hasn't necessarily shown it much to say because he does play in Fulham. But I guarantee you, as long as he stays healthy, da da da, da uh, he'll be on a Liverpool, Manchester, uh, and Chelsea, a Byron, a Barcelona, a Real Madrid, he will be on one of those teams. Now, what's really messed up is that his contract's up next year. So what that means is that Fulham probably aren't going to be able to resign him, especially since they're getting relegated. So he is going to have to either be sold or Fulham are going to lose him for a free. And uh, they're not going to lose Ryan Sessegnon for absolutely nothing. That's absolutely foolish. So he does have a twin brother, uh, Stephen, Stephen Sessegnon, that plays with Fulham as well. So it will be interesting to see what does transpire. But 
this is like going to be the topic of the summer is where Ryan Sessio will end up because he's absolutely guaranteed to move since Fulham are being relegated. Now, coming all how's that relevant to right now? He's been playing incredible since Fulham has been relegated, and it really wouldn't surprise me to see him continue to play top level out of his skin kind of games because he is expected he's being on the he's he's being paraded right now he he's being sold so uh yeah i I expect him to have a really good game and that concerns me against pickford uh because pickford is probably going to be the highest owned goalie of the slate uh so yeah I, I'm not necessarily saying don't play Pickford, but at the same time, if he happens to concede and it's Ryan Cessna, really don't be surprised. So I actually really like Cessna a lot this slate. I think he has a ton of upside from 5.7K. GPP only, though, strictly GPP. You don't want to do much more than that. Um, now, into again, into the midfield for uh, Fulham, there isn't really much else. And up front, Mitrovic and Glenn Murray, two guys who have repeatedly broken slates and just don't cost enough. And look what Mitrovic pulled last slate. Uh, again, like he is, he's getting sold. He's one of those guys that was brought in for absurd amounts of money. So uh, I see. I think uh, uh, Sessignon and Mitrovic stack the slate in GPP is really interesting. Really interesting. Uh, is it my favorite? No, but like uh, I, I, I could see someone getting away with it in a really deep field or a big payout. Uh, I think that could make a little bit of sense. And finally, Ryan Babel does have the pedigree, but just costs too much. Uh, and uh, alternating uh, the goals and a, a goal, uh, no goal. So I, I'm just not interested since I'm chasing that too in Everton. <laughs> so yeah, I, I like uh, assessing on Mitrovic GPP. Outside of that, I'm really not too concerned. Final score, I will say Everton 2, Fulham 0. Next game on the slate, we have the final normal time game of the slate. Wolves traveling to the south coast to play Southampton. So, um, where, to, what, where to begin with Wolves or what to say? Okay, they've lost only two of their previous 10 games, winning five of those 10. However, they haven't won in four straight away games, winning only one of their previous five and three of their previous 10 away from home. They've conceded in 12 straight away games. Uh, but what's kind of interesting is all that said, they don't really have a home away split. They're not a better home or away team. Uh, they've just been really bad recently uh, away from home. And they haven't really been very good at home. A lot of this has to do with this really weird thing that Wolves have going on. Where they're incredible against teams that are better than them in the standings. And they tend to fall down to quality of teams uh, that are below them in the standings. For example, they haven't beaten Fulham or Huddersfield this season. And if you haven't heard... From my previous talk there, both those teams are really, really, really bad. So, yeah, uh, Wolves just tends to crap out against big team or smaller teams. And Southampton is most certainly a smaller team. And much like some of the other relegated bound kind of, we need to win this game team, Southampton's against the ropes right now. So, um, not necessarily interested in Rio Patricio. I don't see Southampton taking a lot of shots, nor staying off the score sheet. So I think Southampton will score and Rio Patricio will not make more than three saves, which will doom him to less than five fantasy points. Uh, so not interested in that. And the wingbacks, while cheap, uh, again, the minutes are a concern, uh, rather inconsistent. I'm glad Doherty is no longer like the ridiculous salaries. Like, uh, yeah, 4K, again, he's a good pivot off those 5K guys that are doing the exact same thing, but there's just no upside for me this late. I'd rather be on the other side of the field. Now, I talked about this very briefly earlier. Camarasa is one of these two guys that I'm torn on this late about cash because I think they're supposed to do well, but they just haven't been doing well enough lately. And the other guy is Moutinho uh, from 6.7K. So... I think you can get away with this. I'm not thrilled about it, uh, but Moutinho and Camarasa in cash, I think, uh, does work out this slate. Um, Southampton just isn't good enough, p 
period. And Moutinho has had a decent enough floor all season. And I see him getting a little bit of upside from low ownership this late. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, 6.7K is a little bit steep. I'd rather be down 5.7K. But in terms of uh, what's up here, I think he's worth an assist this late. Uh, so, yeah. Um, like I mentioned earlier about the midfield forwards, Wolves is just one huge team of that. So I also really like that too. Uh, Jimenez, though, is someone I'm really keyed into this slate for GPP. You'll understand more again here where I talk about Southampton, but there's a really high score prop, in my opinion, for Jimenez this slate. My one concern is that I have him captain as my season long in, in my fantasy league this this uh, this week. And if you followed any of my videos when I bring this up, that's usually the biggest red flag that you can just plan in someone possible. So I'm going Jimin as captain this slate in season long. Uh, so you may want to fade him and go the other side of the field. But honestly, uh, they all are kind of, I say kind of, because their minutes aren't really set. I'd rather just stick with Jimenez. Uh, because you never really know who you're getting anywhere else. Uh, so yeah, uh, Jimenez for 90 minutes. Don't bother with anyone else. Maybe even a Motinho Jimenez and a um, and a Mitrovic Sessegnon stack uh, could be really low owned, and then that also allows you to spend up on defense because neither of them are necessarily expensive either. So yeah, um, in terms of Southampton. Southampton has actually come into this in pretty decent form. They've won three of their previous five. They've lost only two of those five. And they've lost only four of their previous ten. However, they've won only four of their 16 home games this season, drawing and losing six each. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the fact Southampton are the draw kings of the English Premier League. They've consistently, season after season, just drawn and drawn and drawn. Tons of ties, so don't be surprised if there's another tie this slate. Um, lots of goals. They've scored in 11 straight home games. However, they've conceded in 10 of those 11 games. And uh, both teams have scored in 20 of the 32 games this season. So... Uh, like I said, uh, don't sleep on the Jimenez uh, getting the, the goal here in GPP. Uh, probably not in cash. Now, to, to go back to the Southampton side of thing, if you haven't heard me talk about Angus Gunn, he's in my top five. Uh, I'll very quickly touch on Angus Gunn. His parents are both incredible athletes. His father was one, I shouldn't say was. His father is considered the greatest English keeper of all time uh, from like the 60s and 70s. His Coaches growing up were some of the greatest English keepers of all time. He's been pedigreed his entire life. He was owned by City, who sold him to Southampton, which can only mean that he's going to be sold to Liverpool here in a few years. Uh, so he's definitely got all it takes to uh, get it done in uh, both real life and GPP. Wolves haven't been very good recently, so don't sleep on Angus Gunn in GPP this slate. He definitely is my favorite, uh, but he's definitely a top five, top half keeper play. And a lot of that, too, has to do with his wingbacks. They're very, very good uh, in real life and GPP. Uh, again, Ryan Bertrand's doing that five-day fantasy point thing from 5K, though I do think he has some GPP upside this slate. Uh, Valerie is getting some time on the other wing. I really like him as well. And uh, 5.3K is a little bit much, but if you're chasing the clean sheet, I think that is viable because not many people will be chasing a gun, Bertrand, Valerie, uh, a GPP swing. Uh, now, in terms of Ward Prowse, it's tough. Uh, I, I would rather, yeah. See, this is the thing is like he's kind of got the Ashley Young curse where he'll cross the ball a million times and he'll somehow finish with less points than he should have gotten. Uh, so, yeah, not a lot of decent floor despite having uh, tons of opportunity to get it. And that's a concern for me from 8.1K. And Holberg, I'd rather spend down on that. He's had a decent floor all season. And has consistently found uh, double-digit ranges. Uh, he's been playing really, really well as of late. Uh, so if you're looking to jump on something on Southampton, I'd much rather take Holberg. 
in GPP, I think you can get away with the Ward, Press, Holberg stack and fade the forwards. A lot of that has to do with the fact that the Southampton forwards are just atrocious. They've never played 90 minutes ever. Uh, they never will. They always come off for each other and they never get enough time to uh, really get a big input uh, into a game. So yeah, uh, yeah, not interested. More reason to stack the midfield and go with uh, some Ward Prowse or uh, Ward Prowse and Holberg together. Excuse me. Uh, so yeah, final score. I will say, I want to say one nothing Southampton. Um, it'll probably be a two one. I'll be really surprised. If there's three total goals. I'll say a one one draw is probably the most sense. Uh, but I'm hoping for one nothing. So one one draw, one nothing. Hopefully for Southampton. Final game on the slate. We have West Ham making the trip to Man United. First, I'm just going to re quickly rebuild uh, what I had going here. Uh, I, I was leaving the, that open. Whether you want to go the Again, it's tough, right? The camera asks uh, Matinho is what I'm thinking. And then uh, probably the Sigurdsson McNeil. Now, that doesn't leave a ton of room uh, left. But uh, like I said here... Uh, the final game of the slate, West Ham at Man United. And, yeah, I'm excited for this. That should be Johan. Oops, sorry about that. Um, I'm excited for this last game. And this is the reason why I'm excited for the last game. If you aren't following soccer or missed what happened last week, Man United played Barcelona in the Champions League and they played Barcelona in Barcelona on Tuesday. So they're resting players. There is no question. They got to rest bodies here. They're only down one nothing. They still have a chance at this. So um, that's the first big take for the slate. Save it till the end. Man United is going to be resting guys. I'll be surprised if Rashford plays. I'll be surprised if Martial plays. I'll be surprised if Lingard plays. I'm expecting uh, names like uh, the, uh, where is he? Angel Gomez, the McTomahays, the Freds, uh, the Greenwoods, especially the Greenwoods. I'll be really surprised if Greenwood doesn't see minutes this slate. Um, there was someone else I was thinking of. Uh, maybe he's a defender. No, but uh, I am getting to the defense here shortly. But let, let's start with West Ham. Sorry to get off track there. Win, winless in seven straight away games. They've lost uh, six of those seven away, and they've shut out, been shut out in each of those losses. In fact, they've been shut out in three straight away games to Chelsea, Cardiff, and Manchester City. Uh, previous to those seven games, they had three straight wins, but previous to those three wins, so outside those their last ten games, they've won only one of their previous six. And they've had fewer than four total goals in of their 13 straight away games. So, um, yeah, I'm not looking for a lot of goals this slate. I don't like Fabanski because I think Man United can win. Uh, but in terms of a value keeper, yes. If you need a value keeper play this slate, it's absolutely Fabanski, no question. Don't worry about it. Man United really shouldn't score more than twice, but I'll be really surprised if West Ham score at all. Uh, so, yeah, um, Fabanski, good value option. Gives you some room here to do some wiggling at the back. Now, in terms of his defense, I'm not really interested. Uh, Cresswell and uh, Masuaku could either find their way in. Again, it's like the 5K guys who are doing that 5 to 8 fancy range thing. Uh, I do like, I think Cresswell is on the up and up. If you're looking for a guy who's still a buy low in GPP, I think you could probably get away with uh, some excuse me, uh, with some Cresswell and Fabanski and GPP and hope Man United's uh, really low, uh, uh, their uh, poor starting lineup creates a low ceiling, allowing West Ham's defensive ceiling to skyrocket. Uh, definitely not my favorite uh, option, though. Uh, and the midfield, it, it, it's, yeah, like, I, I'm not sure what to say because I would like to say Snodgrass is going to play 90 minutes, but he probably isn't. I would like to say uh, Antonio is going to get four shots on goal, but he probably isn't, let alone play 90 minutes. Uh, Arnie sh is finally getting back to 90 minutes, but his floor and ceiling is completely shot and not really worthwhile, even from 5.1K. Uh, 
Philippe Anderson uh, should have a really decent floor, but doesn't. Maybe if you want to play the alteration game, we could be looking at. Uh, no, those are his away games. He doesn't cross the ball when he's away, apparently. So don't worry about that. The discussion over. <laughs> I want to talk about Lanzini. Uh, he's kind of like my Fulham to my Everton this late. Like what makes me really concerned about Man United and David De Gea, who have been conceding at an absurd rate this season. I think they have only two clean sheets at home all season. So yeah, not necessarily someone you want to like be afraid of in terms of West Ham. And Lanzini is that guy who has all the skill in the world. Our T our our Argentinian national team player. Playing 90 minutes has a really solid floor. I don't even mind him for cash. If you want to play some Lanzini this slate, I wouldn't talk you out of it. Uh, 4K is just far too cheap for a guy who's like, if people were playing Ozil at friggin' 3.8K or whatever way back when, you really should be playing Lanzini at 4K against Man United, especially in GPP. But if you're going to play him, you can also get away with him in cash. And uh, just fade the forwards, uh, kind of the Southampton minutes. Everyone takes each other off. And while they're all really skilled and really good, they're just not playing 90 minutes of uh, a game. So yeah, um, Jumping over to Man United. Really excited because we're going to get some value here. Uh, they have lost two of their previous three games. However, they've also lost only one of the previous 15 home games this season, which came way back in August, winning nine of those 15 games in the process. Uh, they haven't, like I said, haven't lost in 13 straight home games, and they've won five of the previous seven, six of the previous 10, and eight of their previous 12 home games. They've scored twice in eight of the previous 10 home games and in 11 of their 15 home games this season. But... They play Barcelona on Tuesday. So there's going to be some resting. West Ham aren't something to fear. So they're not going to come out here and absolutely go ham. Now, that being said, what's really interesting is that Ashley Young and Luke Shaw are both suspended for a little bit in the English Premier League. But they're both playable in the Champions League. Which means that United are starting one, if not two, uh, wing backs this slate that are way below salary. Uh, starting with Diego Dalot, who is easily the top defensive player of the slate. Easily lock this guy in blindly. I know, like, uh, I talked about this in the midweek. Messi should have went off against Man United, and he was borderline 100% play, and what ends up happening is he goes and gets 3.5 fantasy points. Dalot is that easily, like, 100% lock this slate. Don't worry about 4.6K. He should be 5.6, if not 6K this slate. Uh, he's all wheels. He's going to play 90 minutes, and West Ham are really bad. Uh, so, yeah, um, if you want to play uh, De Gea with Dalot, Probably my favorite defensive stack this late. Uh, I shouldn't say favorite. Probably I shouldn't say. It is my favorite. I'm in love with that defensive stack. Uh, Dalit and uh, let's uh, get Lanzini out of there. Uh, DeGay in there. Definitely an absolute lockable scenario as we see what we have right here right now. Uh, this card is pretty tight. I'm not going to lie to you. I really do like this card. And you can uh, rip out Moutinho uh, for uh, Camarasa. You can rip out De Gea for Pickford. You can play uh, You can play Lanzini and Dalot together in the same cash card. As long as you don't play uh, De Gea against Lanzini, uh, you'll be fine there. Uh, so, yeah. Um, midfield. It'll be interesting. I think Pog was... I don't see Pog being rested, but I definitely see Marshall and Lingard being rested for guys like Fred uh, and uh, probably Angel Gomez, Pereira maybe. Mata should get some time. Uh, and it, I don't actually... I would love to see him get 90 minutes. I think he's viable for GPP uh, just because I don't see him... Okay, let me put it this way. He checks out of the boxes for cash. He would be a good cash play, but he carries way too much risk, which makes him a GPP. Now, his salary is uh, good enough where we can play him in GPP as like a one-off because 3.9K, if he gets his floor, you're flying. And if he has any kind of an upside game, you're absolutely takedown valuable. So yeah, 3.9K is way too cheap for Mata, though he isn't my favorite for the minutes. And then up front, it'll be interesting to see what they do. I think... 
there'll definitely be fractured minutes. That'll be for sure. Like there's gonna not be there's gonna be non ninety minute games from Rashford or Lukaku or Marshall, probably all three. Uh so yeah, I definitely see Greenwood see him some time this slate. It wouldn't even surprise me to see him start. Uh but uh in, in in the situation that he starts, he's definitely a GPP. I wouldn't rock him in cash. I would stick to the uh, spending down in midfield uh, in cash and spending up on the uh, the McNeil, Sigurdsons, uh, Jimenez kind of thing uh, in the cash and GPP. So uh, he he's still viable for me, though. Uh, Greenwood is in place. So final score, Manchester United are going to score at least twice and West Ham probably isn't scoring at all. So I'll say 2-0 Man United win. Thank you very much for tuning in, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I'm really excited about this site. I hope you are, too. We're coming into the business end for sure. Rotopros.com. Get over. Check us out. Articles. Top right-hand corner. Drop down. All the free content is there. Join our Slack. Sign up. Uh, it's a fair price. Get involved in our community. Uh, MLB is absolutely crushing right now. Uh, having an absolute blast. If uh, you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter. Rad Rob, du- Rad Rob diamond on twitter sir robert six and all the main sites uh keep an eye out for me there i'll be keeping an eye out for you hopefully see you at the top of the leaderboard this week good luck have fun everyone and take care